Hey mamas, it is Carrie from Reset Brain and Body, and I am so excited about this topic this week for you. And I think you guys are really excited too about it because I think you've probably heard the terms narcissist and gaslighting or gaslighter before, and you are curious if it applies to you or someone in your life. So let's dig in. If you don't already have a paper and a pen or something to jot notes on, I recommend you do that or come back to this one later because it's going to be full of a lot of resources, tips, and tools. So first off, let's start with the term narcissist or narcissism. So this is the person that is most likely to take part in gaslighting behavior. So narcissist personality disorder is actually a diagnosis um, in the DSM, which is our mental health provider's book of diagnoses. And it's symptoms of grandiosity, no empathy for others, and an obsessive need for admiration. So usually these people think that they are unique and gifted, and in actuality, their self-esteem is super fragile. They need other people to think very highly of them. They cannot handle criticism or losing and they are easily and deeply humiliated. So um, they're also arrogant and demanding, and they really do feel like they should have more special treatment than other people. And the narcissist character traits usually happen in early adult life, and they will engage in this gaslighting behavior, which I'll get into, in the workplace, in relationships, in their social circles, they truly do think that they are above everyone else. And they think that they are unique and gifted. In actuality, again, their self-esteem is very fragile, but they come across as this like huge, confident, huge self-esteem type of person. Um, so maybe just quickly identify a narcissist in your life, or it could be someone that you don't know directly, but you have been affected by. Um, some of these examples of a narcissist you might find in a political world, for example. <laughs> so, okay, let's go into then gaslighting, which is a, a trait or something that a lot of narcissists engage in. So first of all, I want to just take you back and I want to just explain how you might know that you're being gaslighted or in a narcissist relationship by some of these signs. So one of them is that you constantly doubt yourself. You want to know if you're too sensitive and you ask yourself this 10 times a day. You are usually confused or asking yourself like, am I going crazy? Like, what is wrong with me? Am I crazy? You are quick to apologize and apologize since you never feel like you are ever right. You are just generally unhappy. Things don't bring you that much joy. You find any way to excuse the behavior of the narcissist in your life and you hide information from them, uh, from your family and your friends, people in your life, so you don't have to explain or apologize this person's behavior. You know that something's wrong, but you can't express it. You can't even maybe admit it to yourself. You start to lie to avoid the humili humiliation um, or the reality that you are in a relationship or being affected by a narcissist or a gaslighter. It's really hard to make a simple decision. You have a really hard time trusting yourself. You feel that maybe you could be someone who is calmer and more confident in a different life or a different version of your life when you're not encountering this person, this abuser. Um, you feel like you can't do anything right and you feel like you're not enough. So what are some gaslighting techniques that would help you identify if this is in fact helping to you above and beyond just feeling like, oh yeah, I can resonate to some of those feelings. So withholding, this is a technique that gaslighters uh, claim to basically lack understanding and refuse to listen and share their emotions. So an example of that is like, oh, I won't hear that again tonight. You know, I, I'm not, I'm not going to listen to that. Or you just want to make me confused. Another technique is countering. So this is where the narcissist or the gaslighter interrogates the victim's memory. So they're questioning whether the victim is remembering something correctly. So, oh, well, consider what you remembered last time, or you thought it was last time, but you were wrong. Oh, no, no, remember you did that incorrectly last time, or well, you made that mistake last time, right? So constantly making someone feel like they have to doubt 
themselves, lowering their sense of worth. Another thing that they do is they will change the subject of the conversation. And so they'll make maybe global accusations to someone. If you bring something up to a narcissist, they'll say, uh, well, you just are so negative. You're so cynical. You look at everything this way. Um, or you don't, you, you just don't believe me. You don't believe what I say, or your imagination is too active, uh, blocking or diverting are other techniques. So they change the subject again. They want to control the conversation and they want to constantly make the person, the victim question their own thoughts. So where'd you get such a crazy idea? Or you're just complaining or you're doing this to hurt me deliberately. Well, that one's a tough one. They'll also trivialize things. Um, they also are just in complete denial of the things that are important to the victim. And they really intend to just like forget the things that happen. So they'll literally look at you with this dumbfounded look and say, what are you saying? What do you mean? I don't have no idea what you're talking about. Or I don't have to accept this. I don't have to take this that you're telling me. Or you're inviting this. This is how you're feeling. Like you're, you're feeling this way in reaction to me, but that's not really what happened. These are your feelings, which is so frustrating when all of these things happen. Um, yeah, you guys are already saying this feels super familiar. Yes, I know that people in my life that are doing this, as we approach the holidays, we are going to have to be around potentially these people because it's important to recognize that this isn't necessarily in a marriage. This isn't in a romantic relationship. This can be with a coworker. This can be with um, just any sort of family member or person that you have to end up engaging with it. Maybe the holidays, for example. Um, this could even be with roommates. And again, this can happen in society, right? There can be someone, a leader in charge that's gaslighting us, or you can be gaslit in the news or um, from different ways in which, again, we're just being uh, manipulated, essentially. Because again, the main goal of a narcissist in gaslighting is as the tool is for a person to lose their sense of self, their sense of identity, their sense of self-perception and worth to make someone doubt themselves. So again, some of the techniques, lying, exaggerating, uh, the gaslighter will wear you down, that you'll feel so low that again, you doubt yourself so much, you become discouraged and fearful and debilitated. You question your reality, you question who you are. Um, codependent relationships can form very easily from this type of relationship. So codependency defined as excessive emotional or psychological reliance on a partner. So if you are in a gaslighting relationship, you most likely feel insecure and anxious, right? Again, they're, they're wearing you down. They're making you doubt yourself. So this may, leaves you feeling super vulnerable and them having total control and power over you. So they give you acceptance, respect, safety, and security, and then will often threaten to take it all away. And these relationships, the foundation, it's based on fear, vulnerability, marginalization, and the way that they keep you there is that they give you that false sense of hope. And so they will treat you with superficial kindness and remorse from time to time, right? Shower you with gifts, shower you with compliments. And this gives you false hope in the relationship. You might start to think, think that like, oh, things aren't so bad, they'll get better. And this is actually part of their plan to manipulate you. And you will be off guard the next time that they're gaslighting abuse really occurs and then they are reinforcing of course this codependent relationship and for a narcissist who's using gaslighting for a narcissist gaslighter their main goal is to dominate and control the victim they are able to then take advantage of someone with no consequence and again they can do this with a whole society or individual relationships and ultimately it lives leaves the victim you perhaps feeling insecure in doubt and afraid Whew. Okay, so that is a lot. So what do we do about it? So a lot of times, um, these people in our life are these people that are unavoidable. They are people that have to be in our life and we have to deal with it. Now, if you are in a romantic relationship or you notice this is someone with a something happening with a coworker or um, maybe some other relationship that you feel like, okay, maybe I can avoid it. 
it's really, really, really important to get some help, get, in, get some support, because the first thing you have to do is rebuild your self-esteem, to rebuild your trust in yourself, to understand what is real and what is, in fact, a symptom of having been gaslighted for a number of years. And so you really have to dig in and do that work to build yourself back up before you're able then to see the truth clearly and then decide what you're going to do about that relationship. But these tools I'm going to give you right now is more so for the day-to-day minutia, just like trying to survive and get through it where it's not necessarily something that you can do for a long time because it ends up numbing you. It ends up making you avoid your own emotions and feelings and not seeing them as important. But if you literally just have to like get through it, for example, get through the holidays with potentially a narcissist or someone that gaslights, these techniques do it for you. So um, the technique that I love to reference is called the gray rock technique. And this is something that it literally is like you act like a gray rock. And so what is a gray rock? Like super boring, (laughs) super unresponsive. It's just a gray rock. So things like when you are in dialogue with someone who is gaslighting or a narcissist, they love to get an emotional response out of you. So then it escalates the entire discussion. They have power and control then in getting a reaction out of you. And then that feeds feeds them. And then again, it escalates. And usually if you've been in these situations, it ends up in something like terribly traumatic. And then very, very quickly, it's all blamed on you, right? Very turned around. Like you did this to me. How dare you? You're so disrespectful, which then sends you into a shame spiral. So how to avoid the escalation, how to avoid this from becoming something bigger is becoming and acting like a gray rock. So things like shrugging, right? Very like non-reactive language and responses, um, non-committal responses. So, mm, mm-hmm, okay. But even like how I did that with my eyebrows, that can be uh, triggering for someone. So like super, super neutral, uh, no direct eye contact. So, oh, you're looking at your phone or you're tying your shoes or you're turning your back and you're doing the dishes. Um, brief responses and ending and leaving as quickly and safely as you can. So disengaging, moving yourself from the situation. So this is like when you're in the heat of the moment with someone who is gaslighting or acting like, um, or, you know, being a narcissist in your face. Um, and again, gaslighting is usually the technique. So The other components of this is really recognizing the situation for what it is. And this comes with awareness of, oh, is this person a narcissist? Hmm. Yeah, I think so. Are they gaslighting me? Hmm. Okay. I think so. So once you're able to build awareness, name and label it, then, okay, recognize it for what it is. This person truly does believe that they are being honest. It does not mean that they are in touch with reality or they're acting or speaking with integrity, but like they legit think that they are being honest. So just recognize it for what it is. So it doesn't mean that you are numbing out and disengaging. It's mean that you're able to distinguish the gaslighters world from the real world. And then once you understand that you need to hold on to your own reality. So you need to know what you know. You heard what you heard. You saw what you saw. It does not change the reality because of the pressure from other people. I know it's hard totally understand. But just recognizing that their own gaslighting, stonewalling, denials, passive aggressive things, threats, pleading, everything that they're doing to you, you are being gaslit. So just recognize that like your reality is still your reality. Your truth is your truth. Um, uh, The worst thing that we can do, and this is, this is honestly, I have clients that come to me after (laughs) years and years and years and years of not being able to accept the fact that they cannot change this person and they need to give up the fight for this person to take accountability. So all you want for them to do is to open their eyes, to see the truth and take responsibility for all the things that they've done. And it will get you nowhere. It will cause you so much pain and suffering. So this person, this narcissist, this gaslighter, because they are not ready or not interested or not taking care of their own mental health, they are never going to be the one that says, you're right. 
I need to take a step back because I'm not being honest with myself and I'm not being honest with you. And this actually might be my problem. <laughs> don't wait for that moment and don't drive yourself just in so much suffering and pain waiting for that to happen. Um, you truly do need to move on and learn how to adapt and be flexible with this person's behavior instead of fighting for them to take accountability. Um, so those are some things that you are going <laughs> to need in your toolbox in dealing with gaslighting or a narcissist. So again, I know this is super hard. I know that this is really heavily emotional and it's something that we can continue to talk about, but hopefully in this you have recognized, okay, what is a narcissist? What is gaslighting? How can I witness this? How might I have been experiencing this for a long time based on how I feel about the world and my worldview and my own shame and my self-beliefs? Um, how to know how gaslighting and this narcissist relationship can ramp up into codependency and how it's so easy to fall into that and then how to interact on a just day-to-day, moment-to-moment using the gray rock technique and then how to step back and look at this a little bit more globally and say, okay, now that I have awareness of this, now what? What do I do? How do I adapt? Okay, um, continue to ask questions and have comments. Um, I'm seeing just a couple comments, but um, of course, if there's more, I will hop back in and respond. And I will also drop in a couple resources that might be of interest to you guys. Um, if you search gaslighting on Instagram, you'll see so many posts about it. And again, it's the more you are aware and the more you know, like, is this happening to me? Will then give you the insight to then say, okay, wow, I don't think this is <laughs> all about me. Like, no wonder I feel so horrible about myself because I've been in this type of relationship for years and years and years and years. So um, good luck. And we're always here for you at Reset.